So for the 2% who are down, here we go. This is not some kind of legal game, okay? I am not in the lawyer game. This is all more fundamental than that. This starts way earlier than that. I don't need to out lawyer lawyers or be worried about giving legal advice because I'm not even playing on that level. Again, it's the truth game. I'm not playing in there legalese, Latin phrased. I'm a bar member and I gotta keep my license in good standing and I wanna you know, make judge and then make federal judge and make Supreme Court judge or make a ton of money as a criminal defense lawyer. I'm not playing any of that. I'm playing, I'm going to be able to use words that are so easily understood by this sheep type public that we have to deal with, that they are all way going to be on my side more than yours and therefore flex public and therefore political pressure against you while you're <laughs> taking all this, all this embarrassing humiliation because your, your domestic terrorism is being exposed so effectively and so plainly that you're just gonna find a way to dismiss the charges because <laughs> I, I never commit any kind of a serious quote unquote crime anyway, so it's always over some nonsense like a speeding ticket or you know a plant. All right. Again, I just want to mention, if you're already familiar with my content, sorry, I'm going to be repeating myself for those people who are not familiar with me at all. All right, let's move on. So what will this course do for you? All right, summarize teach you how to defend the truth against judges and courtrooms, okay? Cops, lawyers, bureaucrats, alphabet boys too. Uh, alphabet boys are like FBI, CIA, DEA, ATF, IRS, all them, right? It's all about not being a bully's victim, okay? Do you wanna be able to defend yourself and your loved ones against you know, thieves, liars, everybody who wants to disempower you into mindless obedience, then these courses are for you. I know that's a bold claim, which requires bold evidence. You know, it's coming as quickly as I can deliver it. All right. Overall direction of these courses. I'm, I'm going to try to deliver the goods up front as quickly as possible. It's like trying to fit uh, Mount Everest in your backyard. It can't be done in a 10 minute video. Okay. But I, I know how everybody's got shorter attention spans. I'm trying to make this happen as quickly as possible so that you know what you're getting into as quickly as possible. Okay, because I don't want to spend my time on people who don't have the, what it takes to get through all this and aren't interested in doing it, okay? Then I'm going to cover the many, many, many fundamentals that are so key to understanding the big picture and so developing your skill set. Now, that sounds really intimidating. Well, is this going to be really hard? And am I going to send hours upon hours upon hours? But no, okay? You can get the basic basics in the matter of hours but if you really want to understand the nature of everything that's going on so that you're prepared for any single question or claim that could ever come against you then yeah you're gonna have to invest time while you're driving while you're waiting in line while you're going to sleep I don't care listening to someone explain the fundamentals of what everything the government tries to inflict upon you basically is using logic ethics and actual reality not their illusion words not their legalese I'll tell you how to translate that all right so yeah I can't fit a 10 pound book in a 10 minute video but I'm gonna try my best and lastly the information is what's special here not any messenger okay I am just an average Joe born and raised in the US nothing special I got threatened I learned how to defend myself and the rest is history and here we are five years later so Let's get to it. How can you beat a judge in court and every other liar? I mentioned it before. This is the foundation. This is the keystone upon everything we do. And it's the Socratic method of investigation. Now, I hope you know what that is. If you do, fast forward a few minutes. If you don't, I'm providing some links in the description. I really hope you look it up because Socrates is my Jesus if I was religious, okay? Him and Marcus Aurelius. But Socrates... The, scientific, the Socratic method of investigation is just like the scientific method of investigation. It's a method to determine truth from nonsense, okay? So I'll give you a brief history, all right? He's, he's just like a classical Greek philosopher from, I think, like 470 BC to 400 BC. Started out as a sculptor because his father was, then he was a soldier and he was actually really good at it. I guess he saved the life of a general. 
But most importantly, he's a, you know, he's a free thinker. He's a philosopher. He's a lover of wisdom. Now, keep in mind, this was all recorded by Plato, who was you know, claiming to be the student of Socrates. And so Socrates actually didn't write anything himself that's recorded. It's all coming through Plato. And I know Plato's super famous, and you've heard of him too, right? Plato then had a student named Aristotle, who had a student named Alex the Great, and through conquest, this whole Greek philosophy was able to spread. And that's outside the scope. Just know, it's not 100%. You know, 2,400 years ago, what is 100%, right? But throughout the philosophical community and academia, uh, Socrates is widely considered to, yes, a person who lived, and yes, Plato did record. Now, there's a tiny voice out there that says Plato was Socrates and just made up Socrates, so he wouldn't get in so much trouble for it, but that's really, that that's, doesn't sound too credible to me. Move on. Socrates was credited with uh, this famous quote, maybe his most famous quote, and it goes, the unexamined life is not worth living. And that's kind of a, a summation of his entire existence. So many people go through life and they don't examine, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Is this going to get me to where I want to be? Is this going to get me where I should be? How am I affecting other people? How am I f affecting society at large? How am I affecting the environment? How am I affecting myself? Am I winning the battle against myself and my own mind? This whole course series is about examining your life and why you do what you do. And are you and have you been conditioned to respond in certain ways at certain times, mainly through fear, to people who want to control you and have power over you, endless, to get you to do with your life what benefits them instead of what benefits you and your family. Socrates is, is in my humble opinion, like the greatest philosopher to ever live, maybe along with Marcus Aurelius, but even Marcus Aurelius, it, again, look him up if you don't know who that guy's. Marcus Aurelius was a great philosopher who had the most power that maybe any emperor, Roman emperor has had, and yet he actually did good with it. He was actually a good emperor who didn't like screw people over and, you know, end up with nothing but women and drugs and war, all right? He actually was this benevolent guy who had this insane amount of power and did well with it. So, you know, if you're getting in the speaking truth to power game, you're going to be in a very small group. And when you're in a very small group as a human being, you, you know, expand, you go out and search for other people who are like you. And there are amazing sources of inspiration who you can learn these basics from far better than I. Socrates was not afraid of death. Socrates was, you know... He, he was accused of not recognizing the Athenian gods of the state and of corrupting the youth. He said, I don't believe in your Zeus and your Hermes and Ares and Aphrodite and all that. And uh, the, he, he was really popular with the youth because youth are commonly more open to the truth and challenging authority than older people who have established careers and they've made a bunch of decisions that they have to continue to support. All right. He accepted no claims without factual evidence through clarifying questions, and I'll get into more of how that works shortly, because it has nothing to do with a debate, all right? So he was accused, and the penalty was death, and so here he goes to a trial, right? Back in uh, Greek times, they didn't have lawyers. They had what's called speech writers, because they didn't have any way to record anything reliably other than a scribe, right? And that's not, <laughs> someone's talking live, it's hard for a scribe to keep up. Uh, so they just had speechwriter, and speechwriter was just a t very talented orator who was very good at convincing people that his client was just accused of a crime unjustly and was really a good guy. Okay, now I forget the name of the speechwriter, but he was a very good one. He was paid very, very well. He was one of the top speechwriters around, and because he was such a fan of Socrates, he offered his services for free. Socrates declined those services and chose to defend himself in this court that had a jury and he didn't care about the feelings of the jury and he didn't care if they were going to punish him one way or the other he just wanted them to know that he was never going to change he was always going to be this nuisance to the state he was never going to accept lies just because it was the popular thing to do he was not considered an attractive man all right, I guess he had like kind of an upturned nose and some bulging eyes and he walked around like a hippie with no shoes and he hardly took a shower. Like he was just one of those dudes. 
but he he had he acted i don't know maybe he had fear but he acted with none i don't know of a guy i admire more than that he acted with none and yet he did it skillfully without insult or ego he developed this whole method of investigation that the entire world has been wrestling with ever since and largely failing if you read the international news but he's he's the og that said truth matters and we shouldn't just fall like cowards to the pressure of society of our little inner circle of whatever profession we've chosen to do he did not fear death he died in a jail cell surrounded by his close friends from drinking hemlock tea i guess it was that an executioner gave him walked around till his legs became numb laid down until it got to his heart and he died and all of philosophy was separated pre-socratic to post-socratic after this guy before before socrates philosophy was considered yeah it's that's the love of wisdom but we're going to observe the natural world it's outside of my body that matters that's what we need to study and after socrates it was no the internal is what philosophy needs to be about are we living a good and virtuous life and what is that what is truth and how do we determine that should we really be just compiling mountains of money and power and status and doing everything to protect that because that's what most people do I just love the guy. What can I say? All right. So let's move on to how does the Socratic method work? All right. Now, here's a little speech I give. I've, everything I've said in this introduction course, I've said dozens and dozens of other times to other people. I've had a lot of discussions on Skype and Discord over the years. All right. So the Socratic method of investigation is a very skillful... Um, it's not a manipulation, it's a skillful uh, tactic. That's not quite the right word either. It, it's a, well, it's a method, okay, <laughs> of, of not just having a conversation with one person to determine what's true. It's to have a conversation with one person with a bunch of people listening who are unsure of what's true. And they're listening to find out who's more credible, okay? The opposite of this, well, I don't know if it's the opposite, but the statist, the government's version of how to determine the truth is a debate. High school, that's why debates are in high school, college, all the way up to the presidential level. Debates are of the government. Here's why. During a debate, they'll have some agreed upon format. I get the first five minutes, you get the next five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it is. Then we'll have five minutes to respond to what you said and I can respond to what your response. And then I'm gonna be able to ask you direct questions and then you could ask me questions. It'll have some format to it that will allow people to make a ton of claims. You can make 25 claims in five minutes, right? The other person isn't gonna have the time to challenge every single one of those. So a lot, most of those are gonna slip through. And the public who's listening is unable to determine if this person is credible or not because he wasn't able to give it a chance to defend his claim. He just knows that and he knows he can make a lot of wild claims. And then they go on the news, oh, let's fact check this and fact check that. And it's like, well, who, what fact checker do you want to believe? Which one's credible there? Because I can't speak to them. That's just the mainstream media talking to me. A debate is horrible. A debate is how tyrannies rule. You don't have one person able to just talk and talk and talk and talk and the other person try write notes, write notes, all oh, remember, talk about this, respond to this. And this is what everybody does. I get it. And some people are really good at it, but you're only good at debating. You're only good at manipulating sheep who are listening to you who don't know what logic and ethics is and don't care. They just want to know how is this government going to affect me if I vote X or Y? Because that's what most people are, unfortunately. I don't hate them. That's just a human condition. It's cowards that mostly pass along their genes because cowards aren't out there fighting the fights and dying. Cowards aren't out there taking risks. Cowards are out back at the village doing whatever they can to stay alive, no matter what it is. It is the human condition, don't be mad at it. Okay, so let me give you an alternative. 
If we don't like debates, well, don't just complain. Give me an alternative. No problem. Here we go. So the Socratic method goes hand in hand with civil discourse. This, this term I use, this phrase that people use to describe a way of communicating. Okay. There's a few guidelines that I like to use with civil discourse. And it is very much to counter the nonsense that is the formal debate. Okay, number one guideline. One issue on the table at a time. One, you cannot, you just don't like what I tried to clarify about your claim. So instead of addressing and res being responsive to my clarification, you're gonna use the deflection. You're gonna try and go off onto something else. You're gonna, this defensive mechanism psychologically is gonna pop up in your head. You're gonna try to avoid the issue. If both people agree, one issue on the table at a time, then that's the guideline. Now, you can move on as soon as the first issue is resolved. We either agree or we agree to disagree and then we move on and that's fine. It's fine to agree to disagree. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But only one issue on the table at a time. Do not jump to the next issue. You will find that emotional, angry people when they're having a difficult conversation are all the time they're jumping the issue. Well, I can't win on this one. You got me pinned there. So I'm going to go over this one. Oh, no, you can't go. I'm going to use emotion to get it. That is not adult communication. That is how children talk. Now, some of you who hear my voice right now are going to be like, well, how dare you call me a child? Because that's how I talk a little bit. You don't always have to talk that way. You could change today right now. But that is the truth. Adults, mature human beings who are really interested in, with good faith in working through an issue productively, keep one issue on the table at a time. They have no problem maintaining that standard. None whatsoever. Because if you're talking on the truth, boy, you could just, they could just talk all they want. You could just talk all you want because you know what's up. You, you can't lose. It's a no-lose situation if you're standing on the truth. All right. What's the second one? No interruptions. Does that really need to be said? Now, that goes hand in hand with, dude, if you're going to take the microphone, give it back as quickly as possible. Be as concise as possible. Do not rant. I'm saying rant in this whole video series. is going to be one huge rant, right? So no interruptions, but do don't take the microphone for two minutes straight. You got to make one point and then they can interrupt with clarification. That is a very kind and polite word. That means I'm not trying to interrupt you, but in order for me to understand what it is you're saying going forward, because I'm very much want to understand you going forward in order for me to understand you, I must clarify what was just said because my understanding of you is conditional upon my understanding of what you just said. This is sequential logic, right? So just clarification. Oh, okay. What do you need clarified? Well, when you said this, uh, I don't quite know the definition of this word. Could you clarify what you mean by this word in this context? Yes, no problem. Here's what I mean. Are you clear on your understanding now? Yes, I am. Okay, go ahead and move forward. No problem. Bam. So don't interrupt unless it's with the polite clarification and don't take the microphone and rant for a long time. You should have pride in the fact that if you have a difficult conversation, I don't want to say difficult, but like uh, oppositional, okay, whatever, conversation with somebody, that they actually have the microphone for more than you, and the more, the better. Like that should be pride. Pride, you should have pride in that, because that's skillful. Anybody can just blah, 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 right? If you can make your point quickly, concisely, and hand it back to them, that's efficient. That's saving time, man. That's what we're in the interest of doing. Our time is obviously limited. All right. The next one, the fourth one, would be always, always, always facts over feelings. Okay, there can be no insults. There, there can be no... There can be no, well, I feel that this, or I think that this. I'm not interested in your feelings. The truth is not interested in your feelings or, or what you think. I'm interested in your conclusions and what factual evidence they are based upon. What do you rely upon to form them? That's what the truth is interested in. So please, I know we're all human beings and I'm not going to be perfect and you're not going to be perfect and we can leave room for each other to not be perfect, but imperfections need to be dealt with right now. 
And we need to keep our feelings out of this as much as possible. We're emotional creatures, granted, but we're trying to aspire to something beyond emotions. We're trying to aspire to ethics and logic and common sense. All right. And then the last and fifth guideline to civil discourse would be no logical fallacies. Now, if you don't know what logical fallacies are, I really feel bad for you. Like, because chances are you've been using them all your whole life. I've included a link in the description about logical fallacies. Read it, study it, know it, don't use them. Okay, because they're going to get called out every single time. Every single time I hear a logical fallacy, and most likely it's like an appeal to popularity. Well, everybody does this, so that's just pragmatic. No, that's, that's a logical fallacy. Truth does not care if a million people believe something and only 100 people believe the other thing. Numbers don't matter to the truth. The truth is the truth regardless of numbers. So please no logical fallacies. And, you know, I've dealt with a lot of kind of trolls <laughs> over the years. And with this form of civil discourse, they just can't stand the heat. They just cannot stand the heat. They always just wither and leave. Or they get angry and there's commit logical fallacies or just repeat themselves and get circular. I mean, I'll, I'll sit there and let them talk. If you want me to make claims, I'll start making claims and you can clarify any one of them. If you want to talk and make claims, by all means, I'll give you the microphone. Go ahead and make claims. I'm just gonna have to clarify if I don't understand something you're saying. Fair enough? Fair enough. They can't handle it. It's like, uh, you know, Jack Nicholson, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> and it's not, it's not you that are the truth. Don't confuse an ego with, oh, I'm the truth. This is me. It's the information. The truth is where the value is. And the skillful use in a conversation of the truth might be your small contribution, but the power is with the people listening. And the power flows through them by your skillful use of the truth. The masses have always had the power, always. And through their public pressure, they create political pressure because there's one tyrant for every 10,000 people who are ruled and they know it. Imagine you're the one. You had better keep those 10,000 convinced that you have something called the integrity of the judiciary. Right? So that's civil discourse. All right. 